So fine. How about this one? Suffering. Suffering. Well, answer the question. Last. Wait, it's not the last syllable. Is there a final single consonant? Yes. Is there a single vowel preceding the consonant? Yes. Is the does the ending that we're going to put on there begin with a vowel? Yes. Is the accent on the last syllable? Suffer. No. No. Where's the accent? Right, suffer. 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 All right. Can you see that? Mm hmm. Okay. Gail's series of Did rapid it? questions illustrates two important tutorial uh, strategies. First, her questions are one form of diagnosis, allowing her to discover how well her student understands the material. Second, she is helping him review spelling principles by using the teaching strategy known as the Socratic method. A diagnosis of student abilities lets you make efficient use of tutorial time. Let us now examine some approaches to effective diagnosis. Experienced tutors often begin their diagnosis with a quiz in the first session. This quiz or diagnostic may focus on basic skills or important material from past courses, which the students should know. Marsha introduces her initial diagnostic effort in a reassuring way to help her student overcome her anxiety about tests. I just, just go ahead and do this. Um, it's a little diagnostic that'll test your basic algebra skills from high school, and it'll kind of give you an idea of where we're gonna go in the quarter. Um, if you don't know anything, don't worry about it, because you will by the end of the quarter, okay? And the last three questions are just three individual things about you, what your reasons are for taking the course, a little bit about you, and one study habit that you would like to specifically improve upon this quarter, okay? And we'll see what we can do to help you with that. Okay, so it'll probably take you about 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll go over it, okay? Many tutors continue the diagnostic process by giving a short quiz in each session. Such tests not only check students' preparation and understanding of earlier material, but also give the tutor a chance to observe how each student approaches questions and problems. Let's see, start with that little worksheet here. Figure out how much you know and how much you don't know at this point. Okay, so why don't you start working on this? Is there anything you can't read? Just ask. Yeah, and just, just, um, Take, uh, fill it out as, as if it were an exam. I want to see how you set up your problems. As you test your students' comprehension of material, you'll need to provide feedback to them in a way that praises success and helps the students learn to avoid making the same mistakes. And, and like Sal, just, you, know, you can do this by helping your students see a pattern in their mistakes the and by pointing out corrections which they could make on their own. Well, I was, I was, or, or, you know, concentrates on improving or something like that. Oh, I see. Okay. But, which, but the most, imp most important point is to get an active verb in there. If you see an is or, um, or uh, to be verb around here, um, it's probably in, an, in a, no, it's probably in a passive form, so see how you can change it. I see. Okay. okay. Here we're able to pick out ameliorate as the main verb, and that's the main subject, so try to connect it to you the government ameliorates or the government concentrates on improvement. And same as here. Usually yeah. teachers will follow a general pattern of, of how things can be revised. Say for example a student will have poor sentence construction. They'll only suggest revisions on two or three and a student will be able to use those suggestions to fix other sentences in the essay. Once you've determined students' present abilities, you'll need to help them understand new topics and ideas. Um, One of the most effective approaches is the teaching strategy called the Socratic method, which involves asking a series of questions that guide students towards understanding an idea or a concept. Asking leading questions builds on what the students already know, and their answers tell you when they are ready for the next part of the concept. Let's observe Russell apply the Socratic method in chemistry. 18 grams. Allowing students time to think through the answers is an important part grams. of his strategy. All right, now in that 18 grams, how many grams of hydrogen do I have? Yeah, 
uh, two grams. Okay, I've got two grams of hydrogen. And I've got, well, six, obviously 16 grams of oxygen. Um, how many moles of hydrogen do I have in that 18 grams? How many moles of what? How many moles of hydrogen do I have in one mole of water? Two moles of hydrogen. Okay, I've got two moles. How many moles of oxygen? 16. No. Yeah. How many moles of oxygen in one mole of water? No, one mole of oxygen. Okay, one mole. Okay, now you notice that the weights aren't the same. One mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams. Two moles of hydrogen weigh 2 grams. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, if I have one gram of hydrogen and 16 grams of oxygen, okay, that's one mole of each. Uh -huh. what, what's the same about these two quantities? If I know that they're both one mole. Avogadro's number is the same. Avogadro's number. They have the same number of atoms on the inside of them. That's, that's basically the only significance of Avogadro's number. If you have a mole of a substance and a mole of another substance, you know that there's exactly the same number in that, in, you know, in that quantity. Mm -hmm. As a session progresses, you can use the Socratic method to actively test students' comprehension of the material. Testing comprehension is more than just asking whether the student understands. Notice that while Gail insists that her students demonstrate what he has learned, she also encourages him and reviews the reason his answer is correct. Okay, has anybody in this class completed his term paper? Right. Do you understand? Do you know why that's right? Because it's, you're talking about each person. One anybody. person. Uh -huh. Now, I noticed that you didn't do the next one, or the next one, or the next one. <laughs> so, wait, because we did these in class. Okay. Well, then do them for me now. I mean, you can just tell me. Oh. The university will issue <laughs> its? Its bulletin in, in, in the spring. spring. Because it's a university and it's collectively, it's one, it's one body. So, right. Okay. Very good. Avoid lecturing as a way of explaining new ideas to your students. By using the Socratic method instead of lecturing, you force your students to think about new ideas and relate them to past concepts and material. Even experienced tutors sometimes get so engrossed in a session that they lecture. Sal's lecturing prevents the student from sharing the enthusiasm of revising a paper and also keeps Sal from noticing that the student doesn't understand. Okay. Well, it's out of place because first sentence you talk about poverty in general. Second sentence you talk about um, you talk about uh, locations. Then you talk about well, okay now houses, which is even more specific. And then you move to sewage systems, and then to people. I think if you transpose these sentences, that might be good. That way you're you're achieving you're going from poverty in general to the villages to the houses to the people in them, right? So there's, a, there's sort of a progression that way. It's out of place because you talk about sewage systems and then you talk about people. And they suffer not just because of the sewage systems, but for the whole thing. Oh, well, I thought at this, you know, I, just, I, I uh, need to give just switch some the sentences. Yeah. Switch these, where should I put this? Uh, well, you just want to just switch these two. This, you see how, you this, see how that this works? This sentence and this sentence here? Yeah. Switch them around. Yeah. Have this. Have houses where the people live are broken down, and then many people, poor people, suffer through their lives. You see how you see how that works? Okay. Well, do you see what I mean? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm still confused, but if you do that, then this seems like it's out of place now. On some occasions, especially during review sessions, it is appropriate for a tutor to do most of the talking. Roger's summary of important ideas during a review session allows the group more time for specific questions. Why don't I review the uh, exponents? They're really easy, and people get confused on them, and there's no reason to. And then we can maybe do some graphing problems after that, OK? Um, what we have for logarithms. Now, this is the only time you're able to use the um, laws of logarithms when you have any of these three cases. That's one of them.
One strength of the Socratic method as a teaching tool is that it helps students to expand their understanding of concepts rather than just memorizing them. Noble expands his students' understanding of molecular biology by asking what if questions to present new possibilities and by providing common experience analogies to help them remember abstract ideas. What are genes? Genes? Mm -hmm. Genes are the places on the, on the DNA which are responsible for a specific message. Mm. You can probably be more specific than that. What are genes made out of? Amino acids. Well, they are protein, so yes, yeah. by extension, they're made out of amino acids, sure. Um, what happens if you upset this polypeptide chain by bombarding a particular amino point acid? Mutation. All right. All right. Uh, what is the result of a point mutation or somehow altering the sequence of amino acids? The final protein would be, wouldn't be this, the, what is required to get the different gene. You, exactly, sure, you get a different, I mean, it's as simple as taking these two words. It's supposed to be a D there, and let's see if this works. All right, the only, the only visible difference here is that we have changed the position of the R. But the ultimate meaning of the two words is considerably different. There's a big difference between a beard and bread. And the way we got that difference was simply by changing the position of the R. The same thing happens in a polypeptide chain. If you take one amino acid out of sequence and either leave it out or plug it in somewhere else, you're going to get a totally different protein. We have suggested two important tutorial strategies in this tape. Let's review them briefly. A diagnosis of student abilities lets you make efficient use of tutorial time. Tests and quizzes given in the first session help you discover basic skill levels and retention of material. Quizzes in each session check student preparation and understanding of past material. Providing feedback to students' responses rewards success and helps them learn how to correct their own work. The Socratic method of asking leading questions can help students understand new ideas, especially if you allow them time to think through their answers. This method also allows you to test comprehension of the material covered. Instead of asking yes or no questions, we suggest that you let your students actually demonstrate their understanding. Avoid lecturing, since it prevents active student involvement and lessens your own awareness of their understanding. Finally, you can expand student understanding through the Socratic method by asking what-if questions and drawing analogies from common experiences.